everyone and welcome to today's lesson. Today we're going to be talking about inheritance. Inheritance is one of those things that really shows you the power of uh, object-oriented programming. So before we dive into the code, let's go ahead and open up Paint so I can kind of uh, you know, give you a visual um, explanation of what, uh, what really inheritance is. So here, just say we're programming a dog class. Dog, and maybe the dog has, you know, a name. And maybe, you know, maybe all of these animals are going to be pets. So name, weight, maybe um, trained, and maybe, or is trained. And let's see here, um, play fetch. Okay. So let's just use the right, right? Okay, so there we go. So the dog will have a name, weight, and is trained fields, and maybe it can play fetch. Uh, okay, so let's also decide, you know, you know what, we're, then we're, maybe we're playing or programming a kid's game. So maybe we'll have a cat. And maybe a pet uh, will also have a name. And maybe it'll have a weight. Uh, let's see here. Sharp claws. Maybe, you know, the field. And let's say, you know, cats can purr. That's, that's unique to a cat. Maybe we have a horse, too. Maybe our game will have, you know, we can have, a, you know, the kids can select the pet that they want. And so, a horse. We can have a name, weight. Maybe is trained also. Um, but maybe can gallop. Okay. So now one thing that you'll notice here, you know, if we had to program all of these different uh, classes, you'll notice there's name, weight, is the similar, and all three of these things, and maybe even is got is trained, um, is one too. So instead of having to reprogram name, weight, and all the methods for everything that's similar in here, why don't we take all of this stuff out, factor all this stuff out, uh, let's see, and instead, actually we'll just create a, a class called pet. So we'll do pet, and let's see, what's similar in here, name, and weight. So now instead, okay, Okay, so now instead of what we're what we're going to do is uh, create a parent class or a base class, and we'll connect them here. And if it's actually like an upside down tree, but you can see now that we're not going to have to program name and weight, uh, you know, the properties three times. We only have to do it once now, um, and we could possibly even, you know, if we wanted to, uh, let's see here. You have to forgive my uh, diagram here. Maybe we could do. Hmm. How do I move some of this stuff around? Okay. All right. So you're just gonna have to deal with the uh, <laughs> the graphics here. So maybe we could even say, you know what? Let's separate our pets into pets that can be trained and pets that that can't. So maybe we have a special even a subclass here. Um, we'll do it trainable or pet pets that can can be trained. Okay, and maybe we'll do um, you know who knows whatever you can maybe play fetch uh, or or whatever you you kind of get the idea. And then we wouldn't have to have this is trained stuff here. So if we decided you know what we have all these pets they're all trained and they can all perform you know these actions let's separate all of that out all of that code um, so we only have to program it once and that's really what we're doing is we're breaking things into uh, to categories and making it easier on ourselves so let's see a concrete example on this because our, our diagram here got a little messy um, so in this program we've created a, a class called pet and like and and paint we said each pet has a name and a weight. We just have uh, properties here with both setters and getters. And then we have our constructor. This name, you know, you know, that's pretty much standard stuff. The first unique thing here is public class uh, dog, you know, colon pet. And what we're saying here is dog, 
uh, derives from pet. So what we're saying is, again, um, you know, everything that's in dog, um, you know, dog, dog, dog is a pet, essentially, and it has the properties or, you know, the blueprint of a pet. So um, private bull trained, okay, so that's is a pet trained or not. And then we uh, call our constructor, which, you know, standard dog name, dog weight is trained. But here instead what we're doing is we're calling the base constructor and then we're just adding a little bit of functionality. And that's really what you're going to be doing typically with, uh, um, you know, constructors uh, where your class is, you know, inherited or using, you know, using inheritance or is, is derived from. So again, we call the base constructor, you know, it'll set these, um, these properties or these fields. And then, you know, we're just adding a little bit more to it. Then we have a uh, method here. If the dog is trained, it'll play fetch. If it's not, it won't play fetch. And then we just create a new dog and, and whatnot. So let's go ahead and run this panda plate fetch. And you can see here that, where's name? I don't see any name in here. Ah, oh, it's up here. And that's because we're able to access, um, you know, the parents, um, you know, parents uh, member fields. Remember this uh, stuff on the access modifiers. If we made this public, this would work, right? And But we maybe we don't want outside um, you know, outside stuff being able to touch our, our property here. Um, so we'll do protected. And maybe, inst uh, remember, protected allows, um, you know, anything to be that's derived from this class to be able to access it. So if we made this um, private, it would actually break um, our class because name can no longer be used. So let's go ahead and change this back to pr uh, protected. So the, really the key here is to, to realize this is actually, you know, up here. We haven't, we haven't uh, programmed any of that logic here um, because, you know, we're just inheriting it. So we could, if we wanted to, let's, all right, we'll try it real fast. Public class cat and derives from pet. Okay. And maybe let's say um, let's do private bull um, sharp clause set get okay, and then um, we'll call our constructor again. Uh, let's see, public cat, and just like a regular constructor, we'll do um, string. Cat name, int cat weight, and then bool, maybe, uh, okay, clause, sharp, clause. And then what we can do here, we'll do base, and we're just going to call our base constructor, which, as you can see up here, just has. Uh, you know, two parameters. So let's see here's pet name. I'm sorry. We want a cat name, cat weight. And then we're gonna go ahead and do sharp clause equals sharp clause. Maybe we'll have a method here, uh, unique method. Let's see here. Public void um, scratch, and we could essentially, you know, create the same same logic. You kind of get the idea. Um, what we're able to do instead of having to, you know, constantly create, um, you know, name and weight and all this other stuff. You know, we can just derive that, um, or use you know, use our parent class or factor that out. Now, right now it's you know it's not real apparent, but once we start getting into really really large classes, um, you know, that can save us a ton of time being, by being able to take all that functionality and logic and everything and and put it in one location and have maybe five or six different objects 
um, you know, derive, derive that means that we only have to, you know, make sure that one area is working and focus on one, you know, one class and all of our subclasses will just use that functionality. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson. It was a little more complex than usual, but again, it's also one of those things that actually really shows you the power of, of you know, C-sharp and object-oriented programming. So uh, join us for the next lesson, and thanks again, and we'll see you tomorrow.